Hi everyone, in this video I'll explain everything you need to know about Make It Sin Solve or Problem Solving Game. This won't be just another video walking you through some slides or animations. Instead, I'll show you in-game footage from our own Prep Matters Make It Sin Solve game simulation. Our team has worked very hard to bring this interactive game to you, so make sure to check out our website, I'll share the link below. On our website, you can also find a free demo version of the first few minutes of the game, so you can get familiar with the interface. One of the reasons why we created our own game is that we wanted it to be more accessible to a wider audience, while also maintaining a very high quality standard. Some of our trainers had to pay almost $300 to access a competitor's interactive game, which is an insane amount of money. All right, we've uploaded two videos about Make It Solve. In this video, we'll go over the game's features and provide some strategies to maximize your performance. I suggest you watch this video first. Meanwhile, we released our second video where I solve the entire game, so you can watch and solve it with me simultaneously. You can find it here, I'll share the link. Great, let's get started. If you're new to our channel, my name is Dennis and I'm the founder of Prep Matter. If you're currently preparing for your consulting interviews, check out our website to access courses for resumes, online assessments, case and fit interviews. We also provide one-on-one -on -one coaching to accelerate your learning. All right, McKinsey typically sends the solve game automatically a few hours after you submit your application. You'll be invited to an interview based on your resume as well as your performance in this game. Unfortunately, we've seen many candidates with very strong resumes fail to secure an interview because they didn't perform well in this game. One of the main reasons for failure is not knowing enough about a game and how to excel at it. With the help of our two YouTube videos and Prep Matters Making to Solve Game Simulation, we'll help you overcome this hurdle. If you haven't applied to McKinsey yet, you should know that you'll typically have five days to complete the assessment after submitting your application. So make sure that you only apply once you feel ready to solve the game. If you've taken the game already in the past 12 months, you won't be required to take the game again. However, we've seen HR make some mistakes and send the game invite again. If this ever happens to you, just inform HR and you won't have to take the game again. Let's go over the game structure. I'll explain each game at a high level and we'll delve into the details with more in-game footage later in the video. Solve consists of two parts. The first part is ecosystem creation. You'll be presented with one of the two scenarios, coral reef or mountain range. You'll need to create a sustainable ecosystem by selecting the most suitable location and the most appropriate species. Overall, expect to spend about 35 minutes on this part of the game. The second part is a red rock study. Since early 2023, this game has been rolled out globally, and it is now the most frequently encountered game type in the second part of Solve. Briefly, you'll be given some qualitative and quantitative data points, and asked to perform some analysis using the calculator provided in the game. Similarly, you'll have 35 minutes to complete this assessment. I'll provide more details with examples later. There are a few other games that you might encounter as part of the second part of Solve. First, let's discuss plant defense. The game was the most common before being replaced by Red Rock Study. It includes two to three games in total. In each game, you need to define a native plant by deploying barriers or animals to reduce the population of the invaders. You're given 12 minutes per game. In the past, some candidates also reported being asked about migration, disaster, and disease management games. But in the last few years, we haven't seen anyone encountering these games. So for the sake of time, I'll show you this visual to give a sense of the structure of these games. Now, let's dig deeper into the first game, ecosystem creation. Whether you're given a scenario in a coral reef or mountain ridge, the concept is the same. Let's walk through the game by showing you footage from our Prep Matter Solve game. As you begin the game, you'll receive some instructions on how to navigate, as it is not very straightforward. This is the tutorial phase, so your time only begins once the tutorial is complete. When the game starts, you can track your time at the top of the screen. Your session will finish once your 35 minutes are up. If you finish this part quicker, you can't use the time you saved in the next part of the game, the Red Rock Study. However, in the previous version of the game, when Plant Defense was the second part, you could allocate more time to it if you finish the ecosystem creation more quickly. As a quick tip, you can determine whether the second game is Red Rock or Plant Defense by looking at the time tracker. 
If the second part of this game is divided into two or three intervals of 12 minutes each, it will be a plant defense game. So you may want to finish the ecosystem creation more quickly if you wish to allocate more time to the second part. On the top left, you will find your objectives. Select eight species that will thrive as an ecosystem. Choose the location for the ecosystem and finally summon your ecosystem. On the bottom left, you'll find your guidebook. This is where you can find information about the task rules and species. The guidebook contains some instructions. In the species section, which is where you will spend most of your time during this assessment, you'll find producer and animal groups. In some games, fungi are also presented as the third group. As you scroll through different species, you'll notice that eight requirements are provided for each species, some related to the location and some others related to the food chain. Let's go over the location-related requirements first. For the coral reef scenario, you'll find depth range, temperature range, salinity range, and water current range. For the mountain ridge scenario, you'll find elevation range, temperature range, wind spin range, and soil pH range. In terms of the food chain related requirements, there are four indicators. Calories needed. This indicates the total amount of energy a species needs to survive in the ecosystem. As you move higher up in the food pyramid, the calories needed increase as well. Food sources. This lists the species that this particular species needs to survive. Calories provided. This is the number of calories provided to the predators of the species. The lower you go in the food pyramid, the higher the calorie provision. That's why producers provide more energy compared to predators. Eaten by. This lists the predators of the species. As you add a species to your ecosystem, the Species Select tab on the right will appear. Here, you can easily add or remove species. You'll also find the eating rules on the right, which is quite helpful to remind yourself as you build up your ecosystem. Next, we have the Location Select tab. To select the location, you first need to choose 4 out of 7 or 8 monitors. For the coral reef scenario, you'll see depth, water current, water clarity, temperature, salt content, dissolved oxygen, and wind speed. For the mountain ridge, you'll see elevation, temperature, wind speed, humidity, cloud height, soil pH, precipitation, and air pressure. You can only choose up to four monitors and hover over the location to see how the levels across those four indicators change. You can click on any point on the map to select your location and always relocate if it is necessary. Now that we've given you the setup of this game, let's discuss how you can make your ecosystem sustainable. While I'll cover the key tips in this video, if you'd like to see me solve the complete game, make sure to watch the other video that we recorded as well. First of all, time management is crucial in this game. Some people spend too much time trying to understand the dynamics and rules of the game without doing their homework in advance. Briefly, here are the things you need to know. In total, you'll be given 9 producers and 30 animals to choose from for your 8 species ecosystem. For your ecosystem to survive, it needs to meet the following conditions. All species should be able to inhabit the chosen location, given its specifications like temperature. The sum of calories provided by all food sources of a species should be at least the minimum number of calories required by that species. For example, if an animal requires 2,000 calories but can only eat two other animals that together provide 1,500 calories, this ecosystem will not be sustainable. Each species should not be eaten into extinction. For instance, if a producer provides, say, 5,000 calories, but the total calorie requirement of a few animals that eat this producer is 5,000 or more, then this producer will not survive. Some animals need to compete to eat the same food source. In this case, the hierarchy starts with the animal that provides the highest calories. After they have consumed their share of the food source, the next animal can take over. For example, if animal 1 provides 3000 calories and requires 1500, and animal 2 provides 2500 calories and requires 2000, and they both eat producer 1, which provides 5500 calories. In this case, animal 1 will eat first. After this, producer 1 is left with 4,000 calories, and then animal 2 can eat, leaving the producer with 2,000 calories. If an animal eats multiple food sources, they'll start with the one that provides more calories. They will only move to the other food source if the first is fully depleted. However, in this case, the ecosystem will not be sustainable. For instance, if animal 3 requires 2,000 calories and can eat two food sources providing 
1,500 and 1,000 calories respectively, it will start with the 1,500 calorie source. Once the source is depleted, the ecosystem will become unsustainable. Now that we've covered the key rules of this game, let's discuss some tips to help you perform well. Don't rush into selecting your species yet. First, examine one species card to check which four location specifications are relevant in the game. While we mentioned earlier that these typically include elevation range, temperature range, wind speed range, and soil pH range, it's wise to double check at the start of the game to be safe. Next, you want to identify a pattern for each of those indicators. Typically, the species are categorized into three different location groups. To give an idea, let's look at Prep Matter Solve Game Simulation. For the Mountain Ridge game, you'll notice species have three different elevation ranges 300 to 900 meters. 901 to 1,500 meters, and 1,501 to 2,500 meters. By selecting one of these ranges, you've already narrowed down your species options by two-thirds. After this, briefly review the species to understand if there is any pattern with the other three specifications. Now you can select your location more easily based on the elevation range you've picked. If you've observed other patterns such as a common temperature range, you can also use this information to pick your location. This whole exercise of picking your location should take no more than a couple of minutes. You'll want to spend the rest of your time choosing the optimal sets of species for your ecosystem. To recap, you're tasked with building an eight species ecosystem. Our recommendation is to pick three producers and five animals. Start with the producers. The nine producers in our set can inhabit three elevation levels. So if you've already locked in your location based on the elevation levels, you should only have three producers who can survive. Of course, for any reason, if you need to remove one producer later on, you can easily do so. Once you've selected your three producers, it's time to create your food web. I'll show you exactly how to organize your notes. All you need is a pencil, an eraser, and paper. Before I dive into this though, I want to address an alternative approach I've seen online, using an Excel template to input values that tell you if the ecosystem is sustainable. I strongly advise against using this tool. Firstly, such tools only indicate if a set of species can survive in the environment, not necessarily giving you the final eight species outcome. Secondly, we all know making it tracks your cursor and keyboard activities, so there is always a chance that they may detect you using external software. You could potentially use a second laptop, but then you'd be involved in a lot of error-prone copy-paste work. Besides, what if the laptop or the software crashes? So we don't believe that is the right approach. Now, let's go over how you can organize your notes to find a solution more easily. I don't want to spoil one of the possible solutions of prep matter simulation now, so I'll use sanitized names for the species, but make sure to watch our other video if you'd like to see how I solve this game. First, at the top right of the page, write your legend, which has three components. The name of the species and, in brackets, first the calories provided, then the calories consumed. This will help you maintain consistency as you write down your entire food chain. All right, now let's write down the producers that survive in your selected location. Let's select three producers and write those at the bottom side by side. Try not to use abbreviations too much as some species may have similar starting names. Let's name our three producers as Alpine Grass, Mountain Berry, and Highland Fern, along with their provided and required calories. Below these calorie figures, you should also write down the final calories as we set up the food chain. Now we need to move up the chain and select the first animal. But the question is, which producer's consumer should we start with? I suggest starting with a producer that's eaten by the fewest number of species. If a producer is only eaten by one animal, start with this one. Looking over our three producers, it seems that mountain berry is only eaten by one animal, so let's start with this. As we write the species down, you should also draw arrows to indicate a relationship between the eater and the food. From now on, it's a straightforward process of trial and error. By following the rules I mentioned earlier, you'll need to build your ecosystem accordingly. Here's an example visual of how your notes might look. If your ecosystem doesn't work, you may want to change your elevation group and move to the other three producers. If you'd like to solve an example alongside me, you can pause this video now and watch our other YouTube video where I solve the entire game. Great. I hope this introduction to the ecosystem was helpful. Let's switch to the second part of the game, the Red Rock Study. As mentioned earlier, this is the new addition to the solve game, replacing the planned defense game as of early 2023. 
Let's go over the setup of this assessment and I'll share some tips to perform well in this game. And again, you can refer to our second video on YouTube if you'd like to see a complete example. You're the new research assistant at Red Rock Island, which hosts multiple ecosystems. There are two parts to this game, study and cases. In the first part, there are three stages in total, investigation, analysis and report. In the investigation phase, you review collected qualitative and quantitative observations and pick the most relevant data points. In the analysis phase, you'll evaluate the data and perform some calculations. And finally, during the report phase, you'll submit a written and visual summary. In the second part, you'll be given six mini cases that investigate different research topics. In total, you have 35 minutes to complete both parts. McKinsey recommends spending half of your time on the first part and the other half on the second part. Let's go over the game setup so you're familiar with the layout. We're using the visuals from Prep Matters make a solve game simulation. Similar to the ecosystem game, you can track your time at the top of the screen. On the top left, you can see where you are in this assessment, whether in the study or case section. On the left pane, you can see whether you're in the investigation, analysis or report phase. Within the investigation, although all data points are provided on one page, you can see that it is structured by objective, study information and exhibits on the left. Starting with the investigation phase under the objective, you'll be given a one-sentence goal of the research. The study information section provides detailed text base and numerical data points. You'll also likely see an exhibit containing more information. As you may have realized, some data points are shown with a white box. This means you can drag them into the research journal. You should drag the data points you think are important to address the initial objective. You can reorder, rename, and mark the data you collected as important. You can also expand the data to see more information. Once you've dragged all the information you think is important, you'll click Finish Collecting. As you do this, you'll see a message asking if you're ready to continue to the next stage, Analysis. While you can still go back to the investigation phase, we believe it may not work in your favor to do so. Hence, the game is asking you to make sure that you're done with this phase. In the Analysis phase, you'll be provided with a calculator. To answer some questions, you need to perform some calculations. You can calculate your answer by manually typing the numbers with the keyboard, using the buttons on the calculator, or dragging a data point from your research journal. Once your calculation is done, you can then drag it to your research journal or directly to the answer field. In total, expect to solve four questions, which in total have eight to 10 answer fields. Generally speaking, the questions in this section are straightforward, as you can go back to the investigation phase. As you move to the report stage though, you will only have access to your research journal. This means you can't go back to the investigation and analysis phases. The report stage has written and visual report. In the written section, you can drag the data points you've already collected or calculated, or most importantly, you can enter them manually. I'll get back to this aspect later when we discuss some tips to ace the game. In the visual report section, you need to select a graph that best represents your findings and you can again drag the data points you've already collected or calculated or enter them manually. In the written report stage, expect to fill in around 10 answer fields. The fields will either be free text or a drop-down list. In the visual report stage, you'll choose one of the three chart types and fill in three to four data points to create the chart. Before we move to the cases phase, let's discuss how we can ace this part of this assessment. First of all, there will be a tutorial at the beginning of the investigation and analysis phases. Take your time to familiarize yourself with the game setup before hitting the start button. In the investigation phase, as I mentioned earlier, try to collect only the data points that may be relevant to address the study's objective. You can go back to the investigation page once you're in the analysis page, but doing so will most likely result in losing points. So how can you know which data to drag to the research journal? First, always drag the study objective. It will help you refer back to it easily. Even if the text in the box is cut short, you can always extend it to get a full description, so make use of it. Next, try to identify the white noise. For example, in the Nolatil's ecosystem example of Prep Matter Solve game, the objective is to analyze changes in different ecosystem variables, such as snowfall, glacier area, and the number of species in Nolatil's. This means we don't really need to drag the information in the last paragraph, which is about the number of hotels, climbing camps, and tea houses in the mountains. Watch our full game walkthrough video to see how I solve this. In the analysis phase, you'll need to provide answers to questions. Make sure to drag all your answers into the journal 
as you'll most likely need them in the report phase. Speaking of which, based on interviews with many test takers, we understand that this phase is the most challenging part of this assessment. The reason is that as of now, you're not allowed to go back to the investigation and analysis phases to remind yourself of the key data points and findings for the report phase. Hence, you're expected to fill in 10 answer fields in the written and three to four answer fields in the visual phase based on information in your research journal. To overcome this challenge, some people told us that they took a picture of each page in the investigation analysis phases. With this method, they could easily refer back to data points and manually type in their answers. While we can't officially recommend the strategy, I wanted to share it for your inspiration. Let's touch on the graph selection and the visual report section. As of now, the solve game asks candidates to pick one of the three chart types, bar graph, line graph, or pie chart. You can always pick a chart type and see if it visualizes your findings well. If not, you can always choose another type. You should pick a bar graph if you want to show how multiple variables compare to each other across a few time intervals. For example, to compare the average base and summit snow death for every month from December to April, a bar graph might make sense. However, if you want to emphasize trends, you should pick a line graph. For instance, to clearly show how the average summit snow death changes from December to April, a line graph would be the best choice. Finally, pick a pie chart if you want to show the share of multiple variables. For example, to show each month's share of the total number of visitors to Nola Tills Mountain, a pie chart would be helpful. If you'd like to get more familiar with different chart types, feel free to check out our Get the Offer course. We have dedicated exhibit drills, which include 50 exhibits for you to practice. All right. Let's move to the second section of the Red Rock study, the mini cases. McKinsey used to ask 10 mini cases, but many test takers had significant issues with time management. This must be why there are now six mini cases. The theme of the mini cases follows that of the first section, the study phase. So in our example, the study phase was about the ecosystem in Nolotils Mountain. Consequently, the mini cases are also about the same ecosystem. However, you don't need any information from the study phase as each mini case provides a prompt with all the necessary details to find your answer. The data points are presented in a mix of tables, charts, and paragraphs, and the answers are either a drop-down or free text. Similar to the first part, one of the questions is also about picking the right graph that best represents your findings. You can watch our other video to see how I solved a complete Red Rock study example and get a better idea of the format of this assessment. So far, we covered the ecosystem creation and the Red Rock study, which is the current format used in making CSOF. I'd like to spend a couple of minutes sharing the game setup of the plant defense game, just in case you're asked this game instead of the Red Rock study. There are three scenarios of 12 games each, where you have 15 turns to implement strategies to keep invaders away from the native plant. The objective is to protect the plant for as many turns as possible beyond the initial 15. Similar to the other games, you'll be given instructions at the beginning to understand the basic dynamics. Let's go over the layout together. On the top, you'll find your timer showing how much time you've spent. Test takers reported that although the recommended time to finish three plants defense scenarios is 36 minutes, if you manage to save some time from the first game, you can spend more time in the plant defense section. Conversely, if you spend more time in the first section, you'll have less than 36 minutes for the three plants defense scenarios. Some test takers also reported being asked only two scenarios, in which case, you'll have 24 minutes to complete this part. On the top left, you'll find the objective. As I mentioned earlier, on the bottom left is the guidebook where you can review the game instructions. In the bottom center, you'll see your plan turns, where you can determine your strategy for the next five rounds, and edit actions that haven't been activated yet during the implementation phase. There are two main actions to defend a native plan. The first is terrain transformation. You can implement forest, rocky, or cliff terrains on available spots. Forests slow down groundhogs and rats. They also allow the placement of an owl or falcon. Rocky terrain slows down foxes. Cliffs cannot be passed, so invaders must detour around them. The second action type is placing defenders like foxes, owls, rock pythons, timber wolves, and so on. Each animal can be placed on different terrains and has varying levels of attack range and damage. Our recommended strategy is as follows. Since new invaders appear regularly from different parts of the map, you should focus your actions around the native plan, usually in the center. You'll know each invader's route, aiding in resource deployment decisions. Also, 
Diversify your resources, as you don't have an infinite amount of each. Revise your strategy if a new invader appears elsewhere on the map. You can edit your plan and don't need to implement all your initially planned 5 actions. Overall, this game is quite straightforward, so make sure to watch our other video where I solve a sample game to understand the dynamics. Great, if you found this video helpful, please give us a like before you leave. Also check out our website Prep Matter to access the game. If you have any questions, also leave a comment below. I'll see you in the next video.